Is it? Yes, Guru Dan, we, you're in. I just need you to flip the camera <laughs> toward you. Tip the camera toward me. I'm going to leave it up to my wife because she. Yes, oh. there we go. Is that, do I hold it like that? Perfect, Guru Dan. Do I hold it sideways like that or what? I'm letting my wife because my wife, I don't know anything about iPads and uh, yeah. <laughs> iPhones. And we, we, we like understand. Yeah. There you go. Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay, he's perfect. here. You want me to hold it like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. What if I push the wrong button and it goes off? You're fine. Are you you're sure? You're, you're right there, Guru Dan. <laughs> Guru, first of all, thank you very much for. Oh, we're frozen here, just waiting for the Wi Fi. Yes. Guru Dan, first of all. I hope I don't touch any button here. No, we all, we're all good. I want to thank you for okay. the opportunity. Uh, I, I, I'd like to say a few things before we start it. Um, through all these years living in America, it's going to be almost 30 years. And uh, probably I met Guru Dan. It's been 20 plus years that I know Guru Dan in Osanto and uh, someone very special to me and my family, my brothers. And someone that more you know him, more you like him. It's someone that it's well known around the world. I never met one person that does not like Guru Dan, does not say good things about him. And this is something very rare in the martial arts world. And through so many generations, I think a Guru must have something really special because the longevity that you have in martial arts, it's also something for few. And knowing you a little bit more than a lot of people that are listening now, it is very honor, very privilege to know you for all this time and uh, be able to see how you teach, be able to see that you also, it's such an incredible person because you also learn so many other martial arts styles. You start from zero. And someone with already the recognition that you have in the world to walk into another instructor to learn their style and incredibly become also very, very good and master and an expert in their styles. Guru, thank you very much. Um, we have a few questions for you. Thank and you, John Jack. Thank you, John All of them the best way you can. <laughs> I hope I don't mess this up because my, my wife is setting this up for me and I don't know exactly. I, I, sometimes I mess up even on an iPhone. So I can, but this is, she's doing it on an iPad and I just hope oh, I all good. don't mess it up. Is this okay, man? Yeah. Okay. It's all so good. I don't want to push any button because <laughs> I usually make a lot of mistakes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't touch anything there, right? No, you just talk. Okay. I just talk. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Let me ask you something, Guru Dan. Sure, John Jack. Let me ask you something, Guru. I wanna I wanna go back a little bit and uh, and ask a little bit more about a lot of the things that I had the chance to hear from you. But can you tell me your beginning in martial arts? Why when that end up coming to you or realize and you chose to do martial arts was who brought you into martial arts was your mom your dad or said well, i want to learn martial arts when did that start well I, right after world war ii which is about 1946 my uncle came back uh from world war ii and he served in the philippines uh under the american occupation and he was uh in the, mil in the army, and he trained a lot of people for World War II. So when he came back after World War II, he's one of the few non-Japanese that had a, a black belt in judo and in Okinawan Te, which is, uh, they call it Okinawan Te. At that, no day, they just called it Te. And he came back, and he taught me, uh, as soon as he came back from World War II, and that was uh, judo and uh, jiu-jitsu and what they call uh, Nihon jiu-jitsu, and then what they, we call it the Okinawan Te, mm -hmm. which is actually karate. They call it Tay, but the Americans call it karate or karate. So Tay is what I learned, Okinawan Tay, and then they call it Okinawan Tay, and they became karate, right? And so he was the first one who taught me. 
And that, and then I was very lucky because my next door neighbor, right after World War II, you know, because the Japanese were put in internment camps. So when they came back, he became my uh, next door neighbor. And he was a local judo teacher for uh, Stockton, California. So that's how I got started. <laughs> and did you, did you in an early age realize that you're going to be doing martial arts for the rest of your life? When did you realize uh, no. that? <laughs> no, 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 not really. I was more interested in uh, baseball, track and field, and football. Those are the arts. I mean, those are sports I, I really like, you know. And uh, then even in high school, I had to make a choice between baseball and track and field because they came at the same time. And it was hard to play baseball and track and field at the same time. And uh, love basketball. And then I was too short by the time I got into the eighth grade. <laughs> Pretty good. I love basketball. It's my favorite sport. But that five foot five, I don't think any basketball team. I sat a lot on the bench in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed it. <laughs> and what, what the one thing that I, I always ask myself is, you when I go to your school, to me is uh, it tells so much of the history, not only in what you do, but it's so many other styles of martial arts, so many other instructors, and it's amazing to me, Guru. It's you are already an expert. You are one of the best of what you do. I would say, for me, you're the best in what you do. But you're still, in a very good way, so hungry <laughs> to pursue and do more styles, more martial arts. Can you tell me how many different mar styles of martial arts that not only practice, but you achieve the highest rank in that style. Can you kind of break down to me how many? Uh, it's, it's kind of hard, but uh, in the Filipino martial arts, my dad was the uh, secretary treasurer of the Filipino community. So this is something that he wanted me to get into, uh, the Filipino martial arts. And uh, so he brought me to different Filipino men who were veterans of World War II, and they uh, did a lot of stick fighting and bolo fighting. But they're all, what my father told me, was, I found out to be, they're so different. You train with one person, his style on stick fighting or bolo fighting, it could be double stick, stick and dagger, sword and dagger, sword and shield, spear, you know, spear and dagger. You know, it, it had a lot of, um, and it fascinated me how everyone had a, a different way. Some people fought more at long range and others fought it more at close quarter and some pop flop more at middle range. And I just fascinated me how there were so many ways you can solve the problem. And that came also when I was in the uh, 101st Airborne Division. You know, people would come back from different countries with Korean karate, Okinawan karate, Japanese karate, Taekwondo, Korean systems. People came from Hawaii or more in Kempo. And it, I found it fascinating because we could trade with each other, you know, and we can learn their method. So we really weren't stuck into a system. In our generation, we try to find out what was superior, boxing or wrestling. Because uh, jiu-jitsu was not, uh, jiu-jitsu was different. It wasn't like Brazilian jiu-jitsu. They did a lot of locking, but they never wrestled. They never competed it. You know, they did a lot. Uh, it's the same with Bruce Lee. He had a lot of locks on the ground, but they never, we never really wrestled it. We never contest the technique like they do in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. But what fascinated me that the Indonesians have an art, the Malaysians have an art, the arts from India, arts from China, arts from Okinawa, uh, Capoeira from Brazil, you know, a lot of African martial arts from West Africa and East Africa, and they're all different. And I just found that so fascinating. There's so many different expressions that you can express it. Sometimes some people are uh, better in the striking, other better in the grappling. And each one sort of gave me uh, a curiosity, just like history. It's kind of fascinating for me to study uh, African history. It's very fascinating for me to study European history and Southeast Asian history from India, ancient history from the days of the Greeks and the Romans. 
So martial art is like that. It, uh, it's, it just fascinates me to this day. Uh, I don't, and by the time you sort of get any proficiency, age comes in the way and you can't move as well. But I, I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I'm, you know, every day, uh, it's a good day to be alive. <laughs> but uh, I think some martial arts are good as you age. I, I, I like the Mizzou Jiu-Jitsu because as you get older, you can, everybody can roll on the ground. You, you're not going to be a, a tournament fighter, but uh, you're learning a lot. Uh, I love the Muay Thai. I love the Thai arts I learned from a Jun Chai. Really good. I, I love the stuff that I learned from Sifu Francis and Wing Chun uh, and my previous Wing Chun teacher. So they all have something, uh, what I call the piece of the pie. And uh, everyone excels in different things. And I don't know, you can stop me when, <laughs> when I'm talking too much. But uh, everyone taught me something that I, that I liked. And I, I was just fascinated by so many different methods. Like, uh, Hold on, everyone. We, we yeah, we have some Wi-Fi connection, but bear with me. We're gonna it's connected yeah. again pretty soon. It's a little, yeah, it's a little frozen now, Guru, but it's, it's, I see it's downloaded. Yeah. The connection is back. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now, Guru? Yeah, I'm just having a little trouble with the connection on your end. Hold on, guys. We're almost there. We're almost there. It's it's been fixed. I think it might be the the Wi-Fi, the connection on your. Let's see here. Yeah, it's still showing downloading, but we're gonna get. It. Oh, it's it's all good. We're back. We're back. Good. Okay. Um. Let let me ask you something, Guru Dan. You like living martial art with so many years. And since we'd say the beginning, and you can tell almost by every decade, is that a lot of changing or a lot of improvement or evolution or the foundation still in martial arts in, in all styles in general? Let me just waiting for the for you to come back. I know guys, that's that's one of the things we go through is some of the connections. We're almost there. We're almost there. I'm just waiting. Yeah. We're going to be back. We're going to be back. Hold on, guys. I know. I know. It's, it's still looking, but uh, yeah, we lost a little connection here. Hold on, hanging in there. Don't go nowhere. We're back. We'll be back. Can you hear me, Guru? Let me see here. Yeah, Guru Dan's gonna come back. He's gonna log in again, guys. I know I have man, I have so many questions to him. Hold on. I'm gonna be talking to him back again shortly. Yeah, Guru, just you gotta log in again. Let's see here. Let's see if you're back in. All I need is Guru, you to log in again. As soon as you do the same thing, I will accept. Then we continue our conversation. Yeah, it's right here. Hold on. Yes. There you go. You're back. 
to my back? Yes, Guru. I know it's, 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 it's some, yeah. the kids, This is so it's, okay, you're it's, it's, it's the connection. Of your back. Don't go because I don't know. Oh, no. We're all good. Look, I'm learning too, Guru. Trust me. I, I don't know much about homes <laughs> either. Let me ask you this, Guru. Being around martial arts all your life for quite some time, do you see a lot of changing, a lot of difference in general in, in all styles of martial arts and JKD? Do you see any difference from the time you learn until today? Yeah, I, I think the most of the time people now are more open-minded than they were of my generation. I think of my generation to Yeah, the the must be yeah, the Wi Fi. We we we'll, we'll lost the connection. To, uh, yeah. Study with different. I know, guys. You gotta hang it in there. I know it's it's so funny because I'm sure everyone around our country right now it's linking into the Wi-Fi's and everybody's using all their equipment at home, and we are all overloaded with so many things. And that's okay, he's gonna come back and we're gonna do it again. And uh, what I'm gonna ask him is, how do you see the evolution in martial arts from his beginning time until today? You know, it's, um, it's incredible, you know? And I'm going to be talking to him and um, let me see here. Hello. Yes, we're back. We're back, Guru. I'm sorry. This is really new. I mean, I apologize. No, it's not you. It's the Wi-Fi connection. Sometimes it might be even better if you turn it off, the Wi-Fi. Hey, Paula, you can turn the Wi-Fi off. It's all good. Well, good, Guru. Okay, so you hear me like this? It's so good. The question I have for you is, how do you see the evolution in martial arts from the time you start learning until today in general? And you mentioned that today people were more open-minded. I, uh, I think at this time, people are more uh, open-minded and they will look at different things. Yes, I believe they're more open-minded than in my generation. And um, did you, on your teaching methods, did you change something from the beginning and now? It's something that along the way comes to you that made it easier for you to teach? Because I know we always have our foundations of what we learn. And in everything we have also each one of us has instructor flavor to change or ad adapt something that we create, in your case, you create, to make our, as a student, our life a little, a lot more easy, you'd say, a little less difficult for us. You know, can I answer this? <laughs> can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. I, I... 
Can you hear you? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Okay? I apologize. I I'm yeah, not, I can hear you. <laughs> you know, my question is, can I hear him? I can hear him, but I, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Yes, uh, I can hear you. I think, well, I think the question you asked that. Okay, we can hear you. Uh, do, you know, I'm I'm on constantly learning it actually from my own students. You, you, know, my, my wife. you got, can you hear me? You okay? Are you good, Guru? Can you hear me? <laughs> um, so Jack, I, I think I learn a lot from my students. They help me on my path. And uh, I learn from everybody. I pick up a lot of everybody. From every instructor that teach me, I learn a lot from them. Yeah. <laughs> Paula, I, I think you, you can't turn it off, the Wi-Fi, because it might be better. If it's with or without the Wi-Fi, it might be better if you turn the Wi-Fi off than connect with the phone. It might be able to get less of, um, yeah. Missing that. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, talk. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Still there. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, what oh, was the question? Oh, no problem. Look, this is... Yeah, no, the, the evolution, you mentioned that you learn a lot from your students on the teaching aspect also. Yes, sir. I, I learn a lot because they, they but you become that becomes your teacher, and uh, the more people I associate with, you, you pull different ideas, you make mistakes, you correct it. You like And you each had your own path in, in different ways, but you all had something to give to, to all your students. And you taught differently, different teaching styles, and but you then you had the same essence among the brothers. And I, I really enjoyed studying with the brothers because you guys are like, uh, for me, like, yeah, you, you really pushed the uh, Brazilian art in the United States. And I, I really like that. Uh, well liked and everybody loved it. I have all my students across the United States when I recommend uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, they just love it. So it's something uh, I think that helped us, at least to help my diff my group to appreciate arts like the movie. You know, I, the I, I, on that, I gotta, I gotta mention something for a lot of people to know was at the moment that you walking into our school, to the Machados and talking about the Machados and mention the Machados to all of your students, to your organization, it changed our lives too because you are also one of the legends from that day and bigger than ever now to me that something that you say, everyone will listen. And you mentioned that and you helped the Machado so much. If we are what we are today, we are able to, to move forward is because of people like you that is already accomplished so much, but extending your hands and making all the other martial arts also succeed. And without your, your help and, and power to I don't think we would be where we are today. It's something incredible that maybe a lot of people do not know, but if it wasn't for you to walk into our school and start training jiu-jitsu and from a white belt and get into a black belt and become so good at it, if it wasn't for you that day walking in there, I think a lot of the things that we achieve in our lives, I don't think we would be able to without all the help that we got from you and uh, and Paula, definitely was a game changer for us. 
And if people today see Jiu-Jitsu, you have an amazing contribution to the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community because you said something and you start training Jiu-Jitsu for us and nobody ever heard about it. Very few people knew Jiu-Jitsu. And at the moment that you walk in and mention to everybody, it changed my life so much, so much. My, my brothers, too, I'm saying in the name of all the Machados. And it's incredible to see, and especially in the martial arts community that is very competitive, but someone at your level be so humble and so incredible. I mean, I have to tell everyone that because if it wasn't for you, I don't think the Machados would be doing as well as we're doing today because it has a lot to do with your contribution as a martial artist, as a person. That's why today I feel very comfortable to call you family because we know each other for such a long time and continue to do so many, many more years. And Guru, can you share a little bit also, just moving out a little bit of martial art, your experience with movies? Because I know not only <laughs> trained a lot of movie stars, well, also you were in a lot of movies. And I'm going to mention one that uh, as a kid, I had that experience. I used to go and watch a lot of martial arts movies. And a lot of the movies that I saw evidently has Bruce Lee and you. And how life, in a way, make things happening. 30 years later in my life, 35 years later in my life, I'm meeting up someone that I saw as a kid back in Brazil in the theater in front of me. Somebody that every time I walk out the side of the movie, I'm go like, yeah, yeah. I want to be like him. And suddenly I'm meeting the person. It's so incredible to me. And the first time I met you, I guess it's like, man, as a little kid, I used to watch Guru then in all those movies. But tell me a little bit about your experience teaching so, celebrities and also being all those movies because I think almost every Bruce Lee movie I saw you in all of them. Well, um, mainly, uh, I, I think I started off with doing some uh, stunt work for, in Green Hornet with uh, I doubled from Marco when Bruce Lee had this little fight with Marco. Then uh, I was still teaching school at that time because my occupation is school teacher. The next one I think I did was the uh, Game of Death with Bruce Lee. And I did, there were two different games of death that I did with Bruce Lee. Uh, I watched him when he was experimenting with uh, angles and movies. So in the backyard, he would film it and then see what it looked like on a movie. Because he, he was very disappointed that uh, a lot of his stuff didn't, didn't show up in the film because you get to uh, dramatize it. And he yeah. was just too fast to the camera. Now that I think they have cameras fast enough. But that time, that was his frustration because he did. He said it didn't look good. So in the movie world, you know, uh, I get a little bit part here. You get, I did one with Sharky's Machine. Uh, I get to use the bottle song with it. You know, it's, I never really, uh, really looked for the Hollywood. But uh, I think some of my students became really involved with it. You know, like, like uh, it would be like Jeff Mata, Chad, David Leach. Those guys really got into it more. And uh, I think at one time, I, I, I think I counted 55 people I had in stunts. Because it's too Hollywood. No one wants to open a school. It's better to get a job as a stuntman, whether it's a small part or a big part. And some of them went on stunt directors and things like that. Uh, there was Damon, uh, Ciosi. Uh, I mean, a, lot of, a lot of the people uh, constantly... Uh, you know, for getting different jobs. So I, I kind of learned from them, and uh, they went into it more. My my thing was teaching because uh, I love to teach. I love to share. I learn from my students. You know, uh, I, I think just studying, and just like in kickboxing, there's a difference between the French, the way the French do it, the way the Burmese do it, the way the Thais do it, the way the Cambodians do it. I think all of it is good, and that can be in movies too. I think that, that's all of it is good. I love the capoeira. Uh, yeah, I, think um, I think it's really good, even though I can't do it. I have a lot of fun with it because I think it gets you in shape. No, it's like yeah, it requires, the... <laughs> yeah, it requires a lot more. Yeah, it requires my, a lot of things. Excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry. Very, yeah, for us to be to be more fit or into for some of the flips, definitely. 
definitely. And Guru, let me ask you this. Why, why did you want to learn Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? I, 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 it fascinated me because a, a lot of locks we did, sometimes we didn't contest it. And I like the drills they do in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and you can do a lot of it solo. So for me, I, I start, I know, uh, I, think, I think within the Jeet Kune community, there was a couple of people that got upset because they said I, that I was going to bring down JKD because I said, I don't think it's so hard because I thought I started uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at a very late age. I think I was, I was, was at 59 pounds. I was old. I started, I started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at a very late age, I think 59 and people were really upset because they just said, nobody wants to see you, our instructor wearing a white belt. I said, I think it's fun. I think a guy, if a guy wants to play tennis and then wants to switch to golf, I think it's okay. But a lot of times in martial arts, they get they got very upset because I was uh, I wanted to learn it. But I, I just found it uh, fascinating because for me, it was, it was a very good conditioner. Uh, I had a bad back when I started and I found out that the movements in Brazil jiu-jitsu strength in the back you know a lot of upas a lot of side escape i think that strength in the back i think uh, I, I remember doing a lot of uh side escapes with hanging in uh, hey and, and and your brother john and uh i just really enjoyed the, uh the trip and i'm really glad i did it you know and uh but I think for some people, they were upset that I that I, that I would train in another eye. But I think it's like saying, well, if you want to study social studies, I think you should be able to study math or, or some yes. sort of science. <laughs> but some people, they don't understand that. You know, they, they kind of uh, think that uh, you've got to stay with one art all the rest of your life. For me, I, I thought it was just the learning process for me was just more important. And that's what I liked about Bruce Lee because he was constantly investigating different things. Uh, experimenting with different things. And so that's what I liked about him. And uh, that, uh, I love the trip. The, the, and then me learning every day you, you, you get on the mat anyway, or step on the floor. And for me, that's uh, worked really well for me in my lifestyle. Is, and what people, a lot of people don't know, and I'm going to ask you because I don't know either. I know in Jiu-Jitsu, but to everyone out there, do you know the guru then in jiu-jitsu classes, he writes every single class he ever had and the techniques he learned in a flashcard. I don't know how many thousands of those cards you have, but I know jiu-jitsu you do. My question is, also in the other styles of martial arts that you learn, you write down those flashcards, the class yeah, that you uh, had. Begin, I think the <laughs> first 12 years of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, I, I had a little notebook on Everything I learned from you, everything I learned from Roger, everything I learned from John, everything I learned from Hagen. And uh, with Carlos, I, uh, in the beginning, before Carlos moved to Texas, uh, Hagen and uh, Carlos taught me. So I kind of I learned a lot from them. Uh, and all your, all your instructions were so good, you know, I, uh, back in the, uh, in the South Bay area. Uh, really, I, I really enjoyed the trip, you know. But that was in, as, was incredible to see in uh, writing down. That's something that most people today don't. They film, but they don't write. And the question is, I don't. Do you remember something that you wrote? Then you try to figure out again what technique was that one? Yeah, absolutely. It happens to me. Like, about, I wrote this. But after the cards, I gotta go. This? What in the world did I mean by that? <laughs> go under the man and turn sharply to the left? Just twist to the right, so <laughs> you can definitely review it. Uh, but that's the way I did. I, I, I did a, I had a look hard for every class I took, and uh, and I, what fascinated everybody had a, a different way to do it, you know, of, of the brothers. You know, you would think they. Uh, I one time I think I went up to uh, your brother John, and I go, man. And so I went, I went in, in the class, and I, I didn't know anything. I didn't ever learn that. He said, well, that's no problem. He says, sometimes you guys get together. Sometimes they, sometimes they do things that, uh, 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 a little bit differently, so you got to find out, what, you know, kind of what, what works for you, you know. Um, but um, <laughs> uh, that part, I, I, I really enjoy the, the research part. But you're absolutely right. If you, if you don't review your notes, 
And that's like 50%. I'd say safely 50%. I go, what in the world did I mean by that? So that's why sometimes I, it, it, I learn it faster sometimes when I watch a person than when, I, when a person does it. I mean, I can't remember where my hand, left hand is and my right hand is or my left foot. So uh, I, think that's, I think that's pretty good, you know. Uh, and Guru, you, uh, let me ask you on when, when you're teaching and some of the students come up to you, do you have like, a, how do you approach? Because, you know, a lot of people come to our schools and they're all different. They're all looking for different purpose in martial arts. And I think all through these years, you basically almost can read the person by looking at them or even shaking their hand. Is there um, any approach that you use when somebody is very shy or any approach that you use when somebody definitely doesn't have any skills or coordinations that when you see that, you always keep the person very enthusiastic to, to learn, want to learn more. In all these years, because I'm sure you get into your school all kind of students from zero skills to suddenly first class, you feel like, wow, it's phenomenal. How you never trained before and you know this much. How how is your approach change for somebody who has a little bit of skills or someone that you're like, wow, that student's gonna give me a lot of work, but it becomes <laughs> like a personal challenge to ourselves as instructors. What would be the approach that you use? Well, I um, try to teach when I teach on seminars on maybe on three, possibly five different levels. And uh, sometimes when too many movements, not, not too good. So it may break it down to maybe one or two or three moves. And I think they find out this technique works for me because of my size, my strength, my speed, my agility, my coordination. So uh, I tell them to adapt. And most of the times, they, sometimes I like to teach them maybe two or three different levels, maybe possibly five different levels when I teach. Uh, I was a school teacher, and uh, I learned a lot because uh, in California, we classify the students like one, twos, threes, and fours. And it's easy to teach the ones and twos, but when you teach the threes and fours that they classify some, and five, possibly fives, yeah, it has to be more uh, stimulating, and you have to find out how they learn because everyone – processes their knowledge differently. Some are more uh, visual learners. Uh, some are more what I call tactical learners, yeah. right? Tactile. Uh, my wife's much fast. I remember it surprised me because I'm my wife's teacher that when I went to Thailand, she learned faster than me. And I, I said, this can't be possible because I'm her teacher. And it's, uh, she, didn't ever, she never took notes because she uh, goes by touch. I, I like to take notes, and she would get mad because I would stop to write notes, and she would, <laughs> and she learned faster than me. And then I found out what works the way I learned is it was different from the way my uh, wife learned. So that's something I learned a lot from my wife, because she's a really good martial artist, and uh, I learned from just watching her. And, but it sort of hurt the ego because I'm supposed to be her teacher. <laughs> She was learning the Cabri Cabron faster than I was in Thailand. And I go, wait a minute, I'm her teacher. I'm supposed to be learning faster. And she didn't take notes because she's more ta tactile and she's more visual. As I want to write things down, and we all process our knowledge differently. So when I teach, I try to teach on maybe two or three or four different levels, you know. And sometimes you make a mistake and you, and you, and, and you do it. I'm a, I'm a small learner, so uh, I like learning from different people. You know, and uh, that's something I've learned. So I have to learn how to adjust because you make mistakes as you teach. If you're a teacher, uh, even as a school teacher in, in public school, I found that out. You definitely have to uh, learn how to adjust the program for everybody. You have to tailor make the system for yourself, individualize the system for yourself, and personalize the system for yourself. And let me ask you this, because I, I like personally to read a lot of books of uh, – elevate people's self-esteem and a lot of these. And uh, evidently, I'm very into quotes that people write. And sometimes I try to write a lot of my own quotes. That's something that I carry on in my life. A lot of things that helps me on my teacher in my life. Is Do you have some quotes 
and I'm sure you do have quite few, that's kind of in a way you, 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 carry, you carry on with you. Some of the ones that are, every time you, you're thinking about these quotes or someone said to you some phrase or quotes that you carry with you that um, keep us feeling very strong and sometimes we teach people through those quotes too. Well, I, I, I kind of like the one I, I learned from Bruce Lee to absorb what is useful and reject what is useless. And that's specifically what is your own talent. The ass, the ass, actually, I got from a book that uh, Bruce told me to read. And so when he asked me to read it, uh, and it became sort of the standard in the, in the Jeet Kune Do world to, to, to absorb what is useful for you and different things will be different. And uh, to reject things that don't work for you and add specifically with your own. But when you reject it, what works for one individual or one practitioner may not work for another practitioner. And that's what I found out. And then what works so well for you in the, in when you're in the 40s sometimes doesn't work for you in your 50s. Our I found age, that in, in our age. <laughs> in 60s is different. So you have to adjust for the age. Uh, I found that when I taught PE. When I was a young PE teacher, I would demonstrate everything. I, would, uh, I was a track and field coach, so I demonstrate the long jump. I demonstrate how to get in the blocks and sprint because I was still young. But as I got in about 10 years, I realized, oh, I can't demonstrate a lot of things. So now I have to have somebody else demonstrate for me or who can do it better than me. And hopefully they might learn because you kind of learn to use visual age as you get older. You know? uh, that's the only thing about age, but I don't like it. You sometimes a little, you lose a little uh, agility, uh, definitely. Of the S's that we learned from Dr. G, you know, uh, you have to have a certain amount of speed to do martial art, a certain amount of strength to do martial art, and you have to learn how to learn about the stamina. And then you have to have a certain amount of skill. And even if you know a skill, you have to know the application of that skill, right? So that's strategy. And if you, even if you have that, then after the strategy, you have to have what I call the last S is what we call spirit. And I think I learned that from Bondo, from my Bondo teacher, Dr. G. But it still holds all, all well for me in almost any art I had because it's it's true. You know, you kind of learn from everybody. I I, I kind of I like my father saying, "You make everybody your teacher," because everybody has something that uh, you know. Let Let me ask you this, too, Guru: Is someone like you who has so much knowledge with so many different styles in martial arts? To me, it feels like you almost not almost, I'm certain that you, you, you kind of even create your own way of teaching and doing some of the things, regardless of what you're teaching. Because you have so much knowledge, so many different styles, and, and you can apply the same or a little bit different principles of. Do you think and knowing all that styles helped you more or made your life a little more complicated? <laughs> I, I'd like to think it helped. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of learn something from everybody and, and then you kind of create something. It's like going into uh, a store, CVS store. You don't buy everything from CVS. So there's products that you get from CVS. Maybe you have to go to Walmart to get another product. So martial art is like that. You kind of pick up a little bit from everybody. You know, uh, I, I, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, they always should tell me uh, you learn different games from uh, different people. You know, and uh, I remember when I used to take you a private lesson with your brother Higgin, sometimes he would bring three students for me to train with when I'm taking my private. Somebody uh, bigger than me, somebody f uh, more talented than me, and then somebody about the same size where I can practice a technique. So I kind of like that because it's different uh, application of a technique. I, I like American football because the same play that – they go for five yards and 10 yards, could be sometimes stopped at the line and scrimmage. Just the same play or the same technique, but it could be two yards in your own backfield, or it could be stopped at the line of scrimmage. And some good days, sometimes it can be like a touchdown for 35 yards or 50 yards. And that's what I find. It's same play, same technique, but the results is different every time you try it. You know, I remember when I said, I know six ways to escape the side control. I'm, I'm, and by the time I figured out which one I'm going to use, I said, oh, I can't get out of it because now the side control is, is now settled in. I couldn't do, even knowing six, I couldn't, 
I can do any one of it, it's just too strong for me. So I found that out almost in any martial art uh, that you have. You, you, the tactic is different every time. Kickboxing is different for, for everybody. The same play, and this is what I, American book is about, the same play that worked for you, maybe you went 35 yards for a touchdown, the next game you tried that same play, it's, you know, two-yard gain, one-yard gain, stop the line of scrimmage, one yard in your own back, but it's the same play. So sometimes it's not the technique, it's the application of technique and how to fit it with the defense that's in front of you. And I, I found that in the martial arts. When, when, whoops, when you teach, um, sometimes you have a student that's little and sometimes you have a student that's big. Is there anything different that you do teaching two different body types? Right. I try to get techniques that were more uh, avail available or work well. well. Usually for a taller man like in Muay Thai, it's good when they learn the knees because the knee gets out there, right? So uh, a lot of times uh, in the military, sometimes when we go on march, you know, uh, it's hard to keep up if you're your lieutenant as long as striding in the fourth march. But if they ask you to dig the foxhole, that's an advantage. You know, I'm five foot five, I can dig my hole up to my waist faster than the guy that's six foot three or six foot one. So there's a, that's what they call advantage and disadvantage with everything that that, that you have. Right? So that's uh, that's what I find. You know, it's always advantage, disadvantage with the uh with your body, you know. And you just got to find out how to use your body and how to use it well. And Guru, being around the martial art all these years, and I'm sure you see many, is there any idols that you have in martial arts or in any other activity? Oh, I have so many. But if I had to go down the line, I, I, I would say my idol was first my judo teacher, Duke Yoshimura. And the teacher I really admire was uh, was Hank Slamansky that I had uh, at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, along with his uh, academy of instructors. Uh, I liked all the Machado brothers. Oh, no. I, 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 heard, I heard someone say John Jack. Thank you, Paul. I, I, I liked the teachings of the John Shah in Muay Thai. Uh, I trained with a, a person named Neem Prabhu Nakarim, who taught me Muay Thai also. Uh, but I, I love the way a John Jock taught me, you know. Uh, uh, not John Chai, but uh, a John Chai Tommy. A John Chai was uh, to me uh, knew how to break down the material for us. I really liked it. You know, uh, some people call, can simplify it, but like Sifu Francis can simplify Wing Chun. Sometimes you make it too too uh, too uh, complex, you, you can't pick it up. So different people sometimes can they know how to take the program and adjust it for you. So I always look for a teacher that can explain it. I, I, I had that thing in track and field in high school. I had one uh, coach that was a, a alternate in the uh, 440 during the Olympic time. So he could demonstrate the technique, but the other coach I had was overweight a little bit, solid, maybe a little, maybe a little bit of stomach, but he could still explain the tactics of the sprints. So you could, some can explain it. Some, sometimes a good fighter sometimes cannot explain it. And sometimes it can. You know, I find that on a lot of dude, straight boxing would be a good example. You know, you used to go to the boxing gyms all the time, but sometimes those guys that maybe punch too many times, they, they didn't make sense of what they were trying to say. And there were some people who maybe never had an outstanding uh, record in boxing, but they can teach it. So I look for the teacher because the teacher can can help you grow. But then the other person that can actually do it is he's good for incentive. And that's what I found out. You know, you, you, you every teacher gives you something of the of the game, and you kind of learn from that. You know, from from the person that can't do it, but he can explain it well. And others who can do it and can explain it well. So you have all the different variations. You know, some people can do it and can't explain it. Some people can do it and explain it. And some people maybe they're not the best, but they can explain it. So I always look for the teacher that can explain it on two or three different levels. You know. What, what martial arts means to Danny Santo? That's a really hard one because I honestly like all of them. 
uh, you can be a little bit more prejudiced toward your style because you're Filipino like the calling. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of a unique approach because of uh, starting off the weapons before you go into empty hands. Uh, the, each art brings you something. It, it, it would be like saying, what art, if you had only had one art to go through life, would it be math? Would it be history? Would it be English? <laughs> I think you need everything. <laughs> or it's like saying, uh, what part of clothing you think is important? You think you're the, the, the pants or the shirt? So I think it all comes together, although one part might be more important than the other part for some people. But for me, I, I think it's uh, really important to kind of look at the whole picture. I think you want to be the, what I call, uh, as much as you can, the complete martial artist, learning from everybody. You know, We go through school with some of us were a little bit better than math than we were in science. Some of us were better in science than we were in social studies. Then you have somebody like my mother. I did. I, she was different. She, you know, she's a straight A student, so everything was easy. You know, as I seem like I struggled through high school, I struggled through college, I, I studied, to, I struggled through graduate work, but I'm I'm, I'm happy. I I, uh, I can't. Uh, some people just have them. Like my mother could multiply two digit numbers in her head faster than I can do it on a computer. And that used to really upset me that I couldn't beat it with my computer. You go 37 times 57, give me the answer, and she would get it faster in the head than I can. But then I find out she's not, not like everybody. You know, that's that's her. And then she tried to teach it to me, and I, I couldn't get it. <laughs> she just sort of says, okay, well, let's go on to other things. <laughs> so I, I think we uh, definitely uh, constantly learning. I think I think, in, I think we won't stop learning until they, uh, they close the coffin on our grave, which I hope is not soon. <laughs> And what, what, what do you, you say or would you say to someone who wants to open up martial arts schools today and wants to teach? What, with all your ex experience that you have today, makes a good martial art instructor? Well, I think uh, liking people and wanting to uh, share the knowledge. And the part I didn't understand, but my wife explained it to me. <laughs> you got to know the business end. Or else you can't survive. And I, that's what I've learned. If you don't have the business part, you cannot survive. And I remember when she took over my school, because I, I used to have maybe 20 guys not paying, or maybe as many as 50 people. said, so no wonder you haven't made. But at that time, I didn't really care, because I made my living as a, a public school teacher. And she said, if you don't go full-time martial art, you have to collect this thing. It's called dues, Dan. <laughs> And I remember that. So I, I think without my wife, uh, uh, I don't think I could have uh, could have had a school because uh, it's hard for me to collect. That's why I don't know who's behind it, who's ahead in my own academy. Because I think it's good to not know that. Uh, but that's just my my take on it. You have uh, wanting to share the knowledge. I think is important. You know, uh, and I think. Being a, I think you definitely understand that that you have to be a business person, or else you your school will fail if you don't if you can't uh, have the finance to support it. And that's something I've learned, and I learned that from my wife. Well, father, I I wouldn't have a school. <laughs> I have um, I have so many questions to you, and I think would love to do that again. But I have some more questions, Guru. Please, I don't want to put you in trouble, but. Which, oh, Machado, which, which Machado brought you like the most? <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys all. <laughs> you don't have to say now. You don't have to say now. <laughs> I, lo I lo really love you. Love you all. <laughs> no, really, in, in all seriousness, I, I love you. <laughs> and, now... Uh, Oh man, that's I don't want to put you in trouble, Guru. Okay. I know I know it's me, but that's okay. I'm not gonna tell my brothers that. <laughs> I, uh, I'm gonna say, uh, guys, love you all. <laughs> you are my wise pick. <laughs> I don't know if I can tell you. She says the John Jack's the only Machado that will come on time. <laughs> so <it's, laughs> oh, he's just the only one that that's not on that Brazilian wasn't time. The only <laughs> that wasn't yes. the only reason. She's talking to me now. <laughs> She's, <laughs> She's looking at me, <laughs> but uh, 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 definitely a beautiful ride with the family. And I'm I'm so happy to to be with the family and, and be learning. Let me ask you this: uh, 
who who is Guru Denino Santo? Well, that's a good question. Um, it's a person trying to learn and trying to share the knowledge, and hopefully, uh, when I leave it, I can leave it a, bit, a better world from it. That's basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can I make a little compliment on top of that? Guru okay. de Inosanto is uh, a friend, a father, a brother, a cousin, someone that everybody would like to have in their family. Is someone that has a, a heart bigger than him itself. That's why as a martial artist that sometimes is not so good because our heart is so big. But it's someone that has an impact and every single person that ever met him, you know, every single one that I in common, I know it knows you. It's incredible because guru, every time I see you and I shake your hand and give you a hug, somehow I feel peace. It's very peaceful. Thank you. It's something that something that you pass that with, I don't know, just looking at me or simple smile, simple it's incredible feeling. That's why I really love personally to all those camps and seminars that I have to your school. I'm looking for so much to see you because mm -hmm. it, it gets such an uh, incredible energy. He's someone that um, one of the nicest person I ever met. Definitely. He's someone that it's, I'm sure if I call you at three o'clock in the morning, Guru, I need this. You said, sure, I'll give you this or... Uh, is someone like that. Is someone that has an incredible knowledge of martial arts that I don't know sometimes if you even realize that. Because to me, martial art is not just when we're actually training or practicing. To me, it goes beyond that point. And you know that it's the simple conversation that I have with you. It makes me like open my mind with some of the things that I, I still, in a good way, a lot of things that I learned in the conversations that we have, in the things that we do at your school, to incorporate that into my way of teaching, my way of conducting myself. You know, is someone that I always, always like the friendly person, one of the friendly persons you can ever meet is Guru Dian. And it's someone that has millions of people around the world that felt the difference of be under you, it's still looking very young with uh, a lot of energy to continue to share that knowledge with everyone that wants to learn. This is incredible. I don't know any other martial artist's eyes, you, that it's your whole life devoted to martial artists and continue to do so like you're like 20 year old, a very young kid because your spirit is very young still the way you teach and the way you, you make people. Because I saw sometimes when I finish my session, I stay there and look into your session. I see to all of your students there, their eyes are like looking at you. It seems something like incredible. And it's something that us as a martial artist looking for one day also to be able to get that feeling that you pass on to all of your students. It's no words that I can say, Guru. Thank you for that honor to, thank you. to talk to you. Paula, thank you. Th thank you very much, Paula, for making that happening. Thanks uh, for having Gary Goodell at my school. Oh, man. I <laughs> can't, really wait. I can't wait for us to go back and uh, share the mats again. And Guru, please do continue so to touch all of our lives with uh, thank you. the knowledge, the teaching that you have and uh, and. Thank you for you one day walking into our school and make all Thank the different worlds to all of the Machado brothers. God bless you, Guru. Hope to see you. God bless you. Very, very soon. Paula, big hug and kisses. Love you guys. And, Paula uh, said, Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Okay. And, uh, I'll see you very soon. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Guru. Thank you very and, uh, much. I hope we didn't miss something much. This is the first time I've done something like this. There's a lot of technical stuff you have to be sharp well, at, right? <laughs> I, I don't know about people out there, but I learn a lot. And a lot okay. of the things. Okay? Thank you very Thank you. much. And I'll see you in the next few weeks. All right? All right.
stay safe. Okay, and uh, okay, you too. Th thanks for sharing it once again. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you.